Hey guys and welcome back to another Ranger 4 tutorial. In today's video it's just going to be a quick one where I'm going to be redoing my ragdoll video. So when I did that it wasn't too great, I missed out one small step which kind of made it a bit glitchy so it wasn't too good. So I'm just redoing it now after a lot of people have mentioned it. So I'm doing that, this will be a lot better. So let's get right into it. So let me see what this is going to look like first, let me show you sorry. So if I press K we just get this simple ragdoll like so. And now that's all we're doing in this video. Like I say, this is just a very simple ragdoll. Uh, I do have other videos on respawning. So this is basically a death function. You die, you get a ragdoll, you can respawn with a different video. So again, completely ragdoll, so it's different each time, like so. So again, if I press it again, just to show you again, or if I jump and do it, we're gonna get the ragdoll like so. Now the camera stays where it is. We can't move, we just get this ragdoll like so. So if this is what you want to make, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So this is actually very simple, it's only a couple steps. So what we want to do first is we want to make sure that we have a physics asset. So for me that's going to be content, mannequin, character, mesh, here is my physics asset. So you do normally get one when you import your character, but if you don't it's very simple to create. You just right click on your skeletal mesh, go to create, physics asset, create and assign and you can leave all these values as default like so. Once you've done that, open it up like this and what I'm going to do is hit simulate up in the top right up here and this is what it's going to look like so I think that's good by default so you can obviously just test it out to make sure that it works perfectly and again you keep pressing simulate and it will look different each time as this is our ragdoll working like so so once you're happy with this once you've got your physics asset created and all that good stuff we can close this and then what we're going to do is we're going to open up our character blueprint so for me that's content third person BP blueprints third person character in here again very simple what we're going to do is I'm going to create this doing a custom event so we can call this whenever we want so again if you die or if you press a button anything we can call this so what I'm going to do is right click and get a custom event so add custom event like so I'm going to name this ragdoll what I'm going to do next is get the mesh so drag and drop a reference to the mesh here out of this I'm going to set simulate physics and I'm going to tick this so it is true like that so essentially we're just simulating the physics and the ragdoll is what happens when we simulate physics so that is what's going to happen to it then out of this I'm also going to disable the character movement so this is the ragdoll done but like I say I just want to make it so the player can't move so I'm going to drag and drop a reference to the character movement there and just simply disable movement like so so I'll do that like that and now I'll just select this hit C to comment it and I'll just call this ragdoll like so and that is it, it's that simple, that's the ragdoll done. So now what I'm going to do is we're going to select the mesh up in the top left up here and then we're going to scroll down to our collision settings. And what we're going to do is we're going to change the collision presets from character mesh to ragdoll, like so. This will work the exact same, it just means that when we trigger the ragdoll it won't fly off and it will work perfectly how we want it, it will just fall down on the floor. So that's the ragdoll set up, now we just need to call it. So I'm going to be doing this off of a button event we can also do this when you die. So if you hit something or your health reaches zero, anything like that, we'll do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna right click and get a K keyboard event like so. Out of this, I'm just gonna simply call function ragdoll. And that is how you call this function we just made, this custom event. This just means that whenever you call this, it's gonna do this code here and ragdoll the player. So again, if you die. So what I might do as well is just off of begin play here, or up here, sorry. What I'm going to do is hold on D, left click to get a delay. So I shall get a sequence since I've already used this. And all I'm going to do for this is simply just activate the ragdoll after a certain amount of time playing. So that way it looks like the player's died. So that's not me triggering it, that's essentially the player's died. So again, you just call this whenever you want, so when the player's health reaches zero or anything. And I'll set this to five seconds. So if we compile, minimize, hit play to test this. If I press K, you can see it's simulated physics there. We've got a ragdoll fall on the floor like so. If I hit play again and wait five seconds it's going to cause a ragdoll. Again you don't need to do that that's just me using it as a different example. There you go. As me not triggering it, it happening itself. So again that is an example of the player dying. So if you want to do it when the health reaches zero or something like that. Let me just disconnect that. So again I'll show you this one more time. It's completely different each time so if I press K there it's going to ragdoll. Didn't quite fall off the edge. So if we try it again because like I say completely different as that's what, how ragdolls work. Like so, you can see it fell off the edge, like that. So this works perfectly, and as you can see, if you watched the last video, this is a lot better than that. And actually, since I've got a first person camera in here, let's see what it looks like in first person. If I press K, yeah, you just get that. So there we go. Obviously you wouldn't really want that, 
but there you have it. I think you know, another way to make the camera follow it is just have it parent the mesh. So if you just have the camera parented to the mesh by dragging and dropping it on there like so, this should follow the mesh when we hit ragdoll. There you go, it now follows the mesh. I don't think that breaks anything else when... No, so the camera works normally and then it follows it like so whenever you parent it to the mesh. So that works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, if you don't have anything you want to do, we've created this ragdoll in which it will be different each time as that's how ragdolls work. We've also got it so that the camera does follow the mesh as well and it just works perfectly like this and we can call this whenever we want. So just if we wanted to or if the player dies, anything like that. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.